Isabel, must talk to you about uh, what happened overnight um, over in Russia, where uh, Wagner chief Yevgeny Prigozhin is said to have died in a fatal plane crash. Um, apparently there's not too many people mourning uh, his demise, um, but an extraordinary tale. Um, the front page of The Sun calls it Putin's Revenge. Um, I don't suppose anybody would be surprised if it turns out that he has been killed. Um, what's your take on it? Uh, my take on it is that we still don't know an awful lot about the circumstances surrounding this. And there are a few things that I find curious and that don't quite stack up to me. Why was he anywhere near Moscow, this guy, who obviously had a great big target on his back from the moment he turned against Putin yeah. a couple of months ago? Um, it all seems a little bit too um, co convenient yes. to me some way so I, I don't want to sound conspiracy theorist about this i'm just saying that this is early days and that there are a few unanswered questions to say the least um and yeah i mean it's all very uh, handy for mm. president Putin to suggest this has happened uh, but this guy was not a stupid guy um, so it seems a bit odd that he let himself get into this position. Uh, that said, um, I mean, I don't think any of us really expected him to last very long wherever in the world he was after his attempted coup against the president. Uh, and how does it leave things? Well, um, some will argue within Russia, Putin's uh, power may be a little bit reinforced by it. You know, in terms of the domestic audience, they see, you know, the sign of a strong man who doesn't let his enemies survive. Um, but it's also desperate stuff, isn't it? And it doesn't change the fundamentals, which is that he's not winning the war in Ukraine. It drags on and more and more ordinary Russian soldiers are dying. Yes. I mean, the trouble is as well with, with the way that modern propaganda works, whenever anything like this happens, you're quite right to question it. You're quite right to wonder whether it is all a bit too convenient. You know, people certainly... John Sweeney was talking in, in Ukraine, talking about his friends in Ukraine that he was speaking to last night, but some of them saying, well, he's already away, he's already gone, uh, he's already somewhere else, maybe Argentina. You never really know what the truth is in these stories, do you? You don't, and maybe we never will. I just Somehow it just doesn't quite feel right to me, this whole thing. Yeah. Uh, but I haven't examined it. I haven't talked to many analysts, and it is really, really early days. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if more comes out about this that sheds a rather different complexion on it. Um, I do think that this man's life was quite extraordinary. It is the stuff of movies, isn't it? I mean, what an amazing film it yeah. would make. Um, you know, terribly dark and sinister character who's wrought an awful lot of evil uh, in his time on Earth. But nonetheless, you know, what a drama. Absolutely. Um, we've got yet another doctor's strike, consultants this time, who are supposedly reluctantly going out for two more days, pushing the uh, number of procedures cancelled to probably around about a million. You've got a piece in The Telegraph uh, this week or just the other day uh, saying that the NHS has basically become a festering wound on the face of our nation. I can't say I disagree with you. Um, we've got dental figures out today as well, which we're going to look into, but which basically are saying that fewer people are now being treated by the NHS in dental care than ever. Um, there's a massive problem here, isn't there? There really is. And the figures, the headline figures on the waiting list at 7.6 million, which are utterly appalling. And each of those figures is a, is a sorry story for a patient. They don't tell the full story uh, because so many people are struggling to get on the waiting yeah. list. There's a whole process to get there. And my article was really about the problems with so-called primary care. So GP services and all of our viewers and listeners uh, will have their own stories to tell about just how difficult it is to get a GP appointment. And then if you're lucky enough to get an appointment, does that GP have any idea who you are? Have they built any uh, kind of relationship professional with you over a course of years where they know about your medical history or are they yet just another locum, another fill-in, you know, just ticking a box, you've got 10 minutes and in some surgeries you're only allowed to raise one problem yeah. as, if, as if health works in that way. I mean, what a ludicrous way to approach a consultation by saying one problem, one appointment. How do you know? All sorts of things are connected. You've got to mention several things often to get the full um, best chance of a proper diagnosis. Yeah. So I think unless we can, unless and until we magic up thousands more GPs 
Uh, we may have to find a system for bypassing GPs in terms of your gateway into yeah. a, an appointment with a specialist. And it seems to me that the things that are being suggested at the moment, and they may work, are generally kind of self-help programs so that, you know, diagnose yourself, get yourself a, a blood pressure measurement, uh, make sure you've got all sorts of things to measure yourself, you know, you take your own temperature, you know, measure your own uh, inside leg measurement, you know, it's almost like you don't need doctors anymore, you can just fix yourself up if you need to do a, an emergency appendectomy on yourself, you know, go and buy a kit from Curry's and you can probably help yourself. It's mad, you know, we've put 200 billion quid into this thing every year and it doesn't work. You know, in any other world, you'd literally put a load of dynamite under it and blow it up and start again. You absolutely, you absolutely would. And um, the terrifying thing is that you, you can't even necessarily buy your way out of this problem. Even if you get together your life savings and try to um, fast track in some way by going private, and people should not have to do that, yeah. by the way, it's not like they haven't paid enough tax. Um, the private provision is very hollowed out at the moment because we quite simply have across the board a desperate shortage of healthcare professionals. Mm. Um, and that is an argument actually for paying our doctors and nurses better, but with strings attached. You know, you're not, if you are going to be given a lot more money, then you ought to have a minimum level of commitment to the NHS and so on. Um, so yes, pay them more um, because we've got to compete in the global market for healthcare professionals, uh, but let's make sure that there are strings attached to that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you'll be pleased to know that on today's date, um, when, the, when the consultants are out on strike, they will have permission to work in the private sector. So while being on really? strike from the NHS, they can still be making bucket loads of money, which is, I think, shocking. Um, final word, Isabel, on Trump. Last night there was a Fox debate uh, held in Milwaukee, I think it was. Uh, Trump didn't turn up. He thinks they're all also rans. Some of them seem confused about whether they like him or don't like him. Um, he is mm -hmm. probably going to get the nomination, isn't he? Whether he wins is another matter. So I haven't watched the full debate, but I'm going to. Um, fascinating when they were all the lineup were asked, you know, if Trump um, is actually convicted of all these many things that he's charged with, would you still support mm. him? It was so interesting. Look at I'd ask our viewers and listeners, look at the clip and see how each of the candidates responded. The one Vivek, who supposedly came out top of last night's debate, yeah. put his hand up straight away. The others, they took a little bit of time, you know, and they did it in, in a sequence. Yeah. So, I mean, really a, a moment in that debate. Yes, I think well worth watching. Very good. Thank you very much indeed. Isabel Oakeshott, talk to you, international editor there.